Welcome to It Was Never You, where we talk about narcissism, complex PTSD, and recovery. So if you've picked up Pete Walker's book called Complex PTSD, it is it talks about what the title says it is. So complex PTSD, the way that he describes it, it is a learned set of behaviors, meaning if it's something that you have learned, it is something that you can unlearn. So let's talk about, uh, for example, something that is that I have struggled with uh, is uh, anxiety and catastrophizing. So it's that thought process where, um, and I'll just share a couple of examples. For example, if you send a family member to the store, uh, you might think that something bad will happen to them and they might crash and you'll never see them again and it's your fault because you're the one that sent them to the store. Catastrophizing. You may, as a child, when your uh, parent would, if you would be sleeping over at somebody's house, when your parent would leave, you would just feel this doom as if you were never going to see your parents again. Now, in and of themselves, these things can be uh, trivial, but if you look at them as a whole, like a whole picture of your thought process, you will see it is uh, an effort. It is a false sense of wanting to control the things around you and believing that you have more of a role to play in the things that happen than you actually have. So for example, if you get angry at somebody and something happens to them, you think that it's your fault, that you had something to do with it. And I've asked people that have not been through complex trauma in their life uh, with pertaining to narcissistic abuse and they know, I don't think that when something happens to somebody, if if I'm upset with them, that it's their, that it's my fault. But uh, people that have grown up with the thought that everything is their fault and that they are somehow faulty and that they are the cause grow up with this system in their brain that leads them to believe that they are to blame for everything. And it causes this need for, for control, okay? It causes a need to control the things around you to such a level that... And it was said to me recently, it's, it's almost as if you think about, you thinking about something will make it not happen because you are thinking about it. You're thinking about all the scenarios. Uh, it's causing you great anxiety, but you're still thinking about every worst case scenario. And usually uh, all, all the scenarios lead to something um, like the worst case scenario of death happening. Okay. These are things that can all be unlearned. I'm, I'm trying to think of another example as I'm, as I'm speaking. I thought of those two, uh, when your parents are leaving and if you send somebody, just in general, this sense of doom and gloom. And um, if you go out with friends, it's, it's not going to be comfortable because you're the oddball out and you feel like you don't belong and you're afraid you're going to say the wrong thing or you're afraid when you go out in public, it can lead to social anxiety where you think people are looking at you. And uh, although we know in the world and logically you can deduce that the majority of people are so self-involved that they don't actually even notice us, but social anxiety gives you the, uh, gives you the the anxiety, which causes a social anxiety or can be a cause of it, will give you the idea that people are just looking at you and you are like this ogre and you just don't belong in the world. This is part of, this is part of the upbringing. And I'm, the reason I'm saying all this is because these are things that can be unrewired in your brain. There's an awesome thing called neuroplasticity where Uh, A while ago, they used to think when you reach a certain age, your brain would just stop producing new uh, synapses. Your brain would stop producing new matter and you would just, uh, that, that was just it. But with neuroplasticity, scientists have come to the conclusion that your brain is, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that every day his mercies are new. You can take that and you can equate it with that. That you're getting, your brain is forming new pathways and then when we wake up in the morning and the thoughts that we think and 
the things that we think about ourselves and our situations are we can either change them alter them very slowly with with a therapist with somebody that we trust um, to change these thought processes and make them more positive and over time the the uh, pathways the way that you think will become um, more more of a positive thing but you have to be really uh, have an understanding of exactly what kinds of thoughts you're processing and to step away from yourself when you are catastrophizing and kind of he has in the book uh, Pete Walker's book he has a section for flashbacks and you can do the catastrophizing when you're in a flashback or it may just be something that you may just be a part of the anxiety so he the first thing what you're going to do is you're going to want to tell yourself that you're safe now these these things like I said before over time will start to change and will you your your brain will become rewired to be more positive but I just oftentimes in this world of social media in this world where we live alone but we get online and we go on YouTube and we go on Facebook we have this false sense of of community and what do I mean by false sense I'm not knocking social media but humans are inherently social creatures so you need that physical touch you need people in your in your physical presence there's a difference and I think that we especially if you've grown up in this type of abuse you tend to feel alone and you tend to feel ostracized and like you don't belong I just want you to know that you're not forgotten that there are many of there are many like you out there and you're not alone and there is help out there so if any of you are struggling with um, negative thoughts please reach out to a therapist Re- reach out to a licensed psychologist if you're in the United States go to the APA website and search for a psychologist that has uh, a specialization in trauma and PTSD and see see go and interview them on my website there are a list of questions that you can ask the while you're interviewing your psychologist and don't be afraid to call them and tell them I want to make an appointment but I want to come in for an interview and I want to ask you uh, some specific questions and and see if this is a fit for me because it's with, like with any other doctor you're not going to go to a dentist to get your heart worked on you're going to go to a, a doctor that specifically understands your situation and I just want you guys to know that there is help out there there are people out there and you aren't alone in this world and although anxiety some days seems so intense and the thought the thoughts are so they bombard them bombard us one thing that I also do is I turn music on music for me is it changes the atmosphere it changes um, it changes the way that I feel now granted there are some days where the music doesn't work and it's just minute by minute get up put your feet on the floor go take a shower wash your face brush your teeth do those small things that may seem like gigantic things get a cup of coffee a cup of tea and sit outside if you can and just just sit there and you know we're all in this together and my story or the things that I'm saying may resonate with you and if they do please like and subscribe the video and uh subscribe to the channel and like the video thank you so much for your time